Well, it's 619. Welcome back. If you are shopping for beef, you've probably noticed the price has increased significantly over time, especially this past year. And as KX News has reported, consumers are paying more, but ranchers are getting paid a small amount and not getting their fair share. So where is that money going? Well, Josh Benny sat down with an expert who can break it down for us. Let's go to Farmers Union President Mark Watney joins us now to discuss NDFU's efforts to enact livestock reform. Mark, you're calling on the USDA to uh, enact greater antitrust laws on meat packers because there's such a consolidation that it's created supply chain shortages that jeopardize uh, America's food supply. Uh, my first question is, why is this important? And also, do these antitrust laws exist? They're not working, or are you trying to make new antitrust laws? Well, first of all, we definitely are trying to get some attention on this issue. We, we, you can really see where the consumer's paying quite a bit more than they should based on the current uh, cattle prices, and the ranchers are getting paid a small amount and, and really can't make money where they're at. And, and you can see the profit level recordings uh, coming out of the packing industry that's owned by 80, 84% is owned by four companies. They're having record earnings at the same time that the consumers are paying more than they should and then the ranchers are not getting their share. So we, we're calling on it. And, and yes, there is antitrust laws that would attach this if we can get the administrations to utilize them. Uh, they haven't been used for a number of years. It's been multi-administrations that have let them go or slide. And now when we get to a situation where there's food shortages and or a pandemic, it, this really comes to light. And sadly, the, the meat pass, processors are really taking advantage of this window of opportunity. And it's just a bad scenario. And, and our job is to represent the ranchers and, and somewhat the consumer. And 84% of America's meat is packed by four companies. One way NDFU is also working to change this is by calling for expanded local and regional meat packing processing facilities. Now, you made some headway on the state level with the state legislative session. How are you calling on USDA to help add these value-added projects? Well, they're, they're actually putting some dollars into the USDA budget that could be assistance for uh, some working capital, maybe some operating capital for these smaller plants to get established. And, and, and I think it's just a real, real neat tool. Uh, first of all, uh, it can help with uh, local supplies when the demand is high and it can get these folks enough of a, a backstop in the financial world so that they can get their selves established, build their market, and have a kind of an ongoing relationship with their customer. And this is just a really good concept. Now, it's gonna take a lot more work than that because these big packers, uh, two of which are not even US companies, they're not gonna let you just have that market share. So uh, that's why you need this help getting established in, so that you can actually compete against them. And, and we're also working on trying to uh, enhance ways to take that waste product coming off these plants uh, getting into rendering facilities so we can lower the cost to those small meat packing plants to be able to operate. All right, so another aspect to this is truth in labeling. Uh, North Dakota ranchers make some of the highest quality beef in the world. Why is it important that when consumers are looking at the meat at the grocery, at their meat at the grocery store, that they know where it's coming from and how will that help change this and you know, divert, uh, diversify meat packing, make it more competitive, so the consumers aren't paying the price of higher cost. Well, it, so the consumer really knows what they're getting, and, and uh, we see this all over the place. Most countries are proud of what they make, and they put labels on it. Here, uh, we tend to try to avoid putting labels on food. Uh, meat's primary, so you know, you you buy a product that says USDA inspected. That does not mean it's a U.S. product. It simply means that it went through the process of being expected, which sadly, you know, without a lot of inspectors, it's done on a random sampling. So small quantities are truly sampled. Uh, these can be brought in from anywhere and they get a USDA label and it appears like it's a U.S. product. Um, there's a lot of regulation in the United States to make sure this food supply is really good and, and safe. 
And so we live by them standards, yet you could be importing product that's not as high quality and the consumer doesn't know which is which. So the consumer's not getting the choice and the consumer should always have the choice of what they purchase. And finally, wrapping up here, because we're very low on time, uh, you're also calling for relaxed barriers to intrastate and interstate sales of meat. Tell us why that's important. It's really an interesting world because you, you have federal inspections and you have state inspections. And in some cases, those state inspections are at a higher standard than the federal. So um, if you want to ship across state line, you, you really do need that federal standard. And uh, we're, we want some relaxing because if the state standards are, are high enough, you should be able to sell into another state's market based on the state uh, uh, inspection alone. So all we're doing is trying to still keep the food very safe, but opening up additional markets across lines. Uh, you know, those are state lines are kind of artificial barriers when it comes to food movement, and we think they should be opened up. All right, North Dakota Farmers Union President Mark Watney, thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.